Okay, shall we get started? How's everybody doing? Good, lunch was good? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, my name is Sebastian Goasgen. I'm a PMC member on CloudStack, uh, so a committer. And I'm going to give you this tutorial. So we're in for three hours, maybe four, depends. Okay. Um, it's hands on exercises. And I set it up on a website, so it's pretty much self-paced, okay? So you're gonna be able to go at your own, uh, at your own pace. And you know, hopefully you finish everything. If you finish early, then good. Uh, if you wanna step out you know, because you think it's boring or <laughs> something like that, you, know, you can, no problem. Um, expectations, so thanks for coming, you know, I appreciate it. Uh, what are you guys' expectations? when you registered, you know, for the tutorial. How to automate cloud stack delivery. How to? How to automate cloud stack. Okay. The deployment of cloud stack or? Um, deploying VMs. Deploying VMs, okay, good. Anybody else? Adding storage to cloud. Adding storage? We're not gonna do that. <laughs> Sorry. Any other introduction? Okay. Who uses CloudStack right now? Okay. So you you you've deployed CloudStack in your uh, <coughs> companies or house or whatever, or you're using CloudStack as a kind of a customer user. Okay. Okay. Cool. So the tutorial is really clients and tools. Okay. So I'm not talking about how to install CloudStack. Uh, that was the there was a tutorial this morning, a boot camp on you know how to install uh, the management server, the hypervisors with the agent, how to set up the storage. So I'm sorry, we're not going to learn how to install storage. Um, so. This is really about clients. This is really about you have a CloudStack cloud running, the API is, ex is exposed. So what type of clients you, know, you can use, what types of tools you can use out there in the ecosystem so that you can talk to CloudStack, provision VM, I mean start VMs, and then provision them, and, and so on, okay? So it's really on the client side using tools to talk to our CloudStack cloud. Sounds good? You want to, I don't know, there's maybe one more chair here. It's kind of tight or, or yeah, the room is kind of small. So specifically, we're going to go through uh, a few tools. Uh, cloud Monkey, which is the, uh, the CloudStack uh, CLI, okay? Or maybe you can, I don't know if you can grab a chair and come here there's, because there is space here. Round tables in a square room. Yeah. <laughs> so CloudMonkey is the uh, CloudStack uh, CLI. It's part of the CloudStack uh, source code. So we're going to go through that. Then we're going to look at uh, LibCloud, which is an Apache project. So Apache LibCloud, there was some talks uh, Monday, I gave a talk on LibCloud. It's all, uh, it's a Python module. We're gonna go through Vagrant. Who knows Vagrant? Yeah, okay, so we're gonna learn a little bit about Vagrant and how you can use it to talk to CloudStack. Uh, if we have time, we'll do Ansible, which is you know one configuration management system. This morning there was a, a tutorial on uh, SaltStack, which is another alternative. There is another tutorial on Chef. Uh, what are we missing? Puppet, you know, Ansible is a new one uh, out there that, you know, people kind of uh, like these days. And then at the end, we're going to go through EC2 stack, which is a new interface that you can use with CloudStack to expose a EC2 compatible API, okay? So we're going to deploy EC2 stack and then use the Amazon CLI to talk to that interface just like you would talk to Amazon. Okay, 
And we're going to do everything. We're not going to install CloudStack on our laptop. We're not going to use a VM on our laptop that has CloudStack. We're going to, going to use this, uh, this cloud here, Exoscale. I'm from Switzerland, and we have a chance to have a, a cloud, you know, Exoscale. That's the cars that I gave you. It's CloudStack based. So it's a CloudStack cloud that's in production. And, uh, you know, I really like it a lot. And then it's, uh, they're friends of mine, so. If you want, you can grab a chair and, and come here. Yeah, OK. OK, so that's what we're going to do. And that's my wife calling. No, sorry. <laughs> uh, the way we're going to do this, I put all the material online on that site, kodak.co, OK? So you just need to you know, take your browser and go to kodak.co. Uh, that's my, that's my domain. I bought, I bought it a couple of months ago. It's supposed to stand for Courses on Data and Cloud. <laughs> okay. So anyway, everything is online there. So go to Kodak.co. And no more slides. Okay. So I'm going to jump to that site. There you go. Can everybody reach that site? Yes? Yes? Okay. So the way it looks like, you see that on the left, you have the menu with all the, uh, the different steps that we're going to do. First, getting your feet wet. We're going to learn a little bit about Exoscale, how to use their UI, start instances, and things like this. Uh, Cloud Monkey, then LibCloud, then Vagrant, Ansible, and then the EC2 interface. OK? So everything is on the menu on the left. Uh, you can. Go from step to step by, you know, you just click. And you'll see that as you progress through everything, the, the green, you know, the green dot moves. And the goal, of course, <laughs> is to <laughs> make it all the way, <laughs> all green, OK? So, you know, you jump, of course, you know, dot by dot. And then at the end, we're done. We've, te we've tested that new EC2 interface, OK? Easy enough? Yes? Cool. So uh, we're going to do, to do this self-paced, OK? <clears throat> so you can get started. And what I'll do is that I'll, uh, once we reach, once I see that everybody has passed a certain step, you know, I'll, uh, I'll basically uh, do the demo of that step, OK? Uh, so just to get in the groove, you know, it starts at sign up, okay? So for example, it says, go to Exoscale and sign up. That's a snapshot of what you're going to see. So you click, you get to that Exoscale site, sign up. No credit card. That's why I like this cloud. <laughs> you just need an email and a password, okay? You don't need to enter your visa or anything. What? Open cloud, yeah. You have the voucher. The code is in the back. So you tick, tick, I have a coupon code. And you enter the code that's in the back. And then you are, uh, you're off and running. Yeah. OK. Let's go. So then once you register, you go back, to, you go to the Kodak.co site, and you see what's the next step. And you get 50 Swiss francs. Yeah! <laughs> it's not bad. You're going to be able to do, to do you know, quite a bit with it. So if you go to the, uh, if you go back here. Then, then just you know, either click on the. I mean, see, uh, scroll down to make sure you've you've done all the, and then you know, just read and then go through. You know, browse the UI, identify security groups, key pair. 
So we're good here. Sorry? Uh, if you grab a chair, maybe you can come here. So that's a CloudStack basic zone. So it looks like AWS with security groups and key pairs. And then, and then you go back to the, the, the Kodak.co site and you'll, and you'll see the, the next step. <coughs> No, if you go back to that site. Yeah. So go, so sign up. So you've done the sign up. Now do getting started. Just read through this and then. Does it work? I lost my um, Wi Fi. There you go. Just So if you're familiar with CloudStack, you'll see that this UI is totally different than the default CloudStack UI. That's because they, they, did, their, they did their own. And that's just an AngularJS uh, front end that, uh, that talks to the uh, CloudStack API directly. Is there a size submission you choose it to be in a small, tiny, no matter, or a breadth of fifty pounds? So the bigger, the bigger the instance, the more money you're going to spend. Yeah, like so yeah, ju just do a micro. micro. Yeah. So yeah, you can you can have a disk. So it doesn't really matter. We don't. Yeah, yeah, we don't. And of course, if you take a 400 gig, it's going to be more expensive than the 10 gig. Yeah. Yeah. So SSH. Did you create? Yeah, you created a SSH security group. Okay. And open 22. Yep. You got your key. You created a key pair. Okay. You saved it on your. Yep. Okay. So once it's running. Once it's running, you should be able to uh, SSH into it. Yeah, it's got a key address. Yeah. The instances start actually quite fast because they, they do some pretty uh, aggressive caching on the nodes. <coughs> it's probably not up yet. And if you're lost, you know, just raise your hand, tell me. <laughs> what are you trying to do? Going back, I know. Ah, oh, there you go. Because it's right in the go here. And oh, really? Yeah, it's here. Oh, it's loading. Oh. Okay. Hmm. So you have to do this together. Oh, okay. Hmm, that's bad. That looks like a bug. So as I said, it's a basic zone with security group. So <coughs> to access the instance, you need to create a security group. You need to add a rule in that security group. And that rule will be open 22 if you want to SSH. You'll need a key pair. Is there a, a default password? Uh, uh, no, no, no. It should. No, no, no. Oh, it's because you don't like ignoring my key. That's why. That's. Oh, I didn't change one on it. Sorry. Yeah. My bad. Uh, six. No. Six. 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 Four. Four. 
Right, no, I meant for local. Oh, six zero zero maybe. Because you don't want it, you don't want it readable by. Yeah. yeah Yeah, it would be six zero zero. Yep. Cool. So you're on a roll. You can get to. Uh, so I guess you did. You did that. I just did two bottles of cyanide, so now I'm just kind of looking at. Yeah. So you you did that already. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah, you did you did that already. Oh. Okay. So go API keys. Yeah. There you go. Okay, so we have a success here. <laughs> you good? Nice. Two people in their instances. Three. At five, we dance. <laughs> Four. You're in? You're in your SSH in the instance? <laughs> five. So when you create the key pair, you know, don't forget to save it on your local machine because CloudStack doesn't score, store the private key. I think the Exoscale actually sends you an email with that private key, but you can get it directly when you, when you register. There you go. So you take, you take that one, you save it. So if you're in Putty, I, d I don't know how you manage keys with Putty, but so you have to put it somewhere. <laughs> so you have a key. Did you save it? Did you did, did you say? No. When you created it, it gave you the private key. Yeah. So create another one. Yeah. Give it another name. Yeah. Create. Here you go. Add. I click add. There you go. So now you got that private key, so you need to save that into your .ssh directory. You getting any luck here? Do we, we want to upload a key pair? So did you create one? We create one for here. SSH key, there you go. So there you go, create. So click on create, put a name. There you go. It's called SSL key, so don't put alligator over it. Yeah. And here you get your private key, so save that in your .ssh with whatever name you want. I should have just done this from my runner key. Uh, so copy everything, including the beginning. Oh, including this. Yeah, yeah. And copy, and now open the terminal on your machine. And go to your .ssh directory. Okay. It's in your home, yeah. Slash, yeah, .ssh. There you go, and just, just. Uh, create a create a file and, and stick that key in there. <coughs> so you have one. You have the default. So click on that default, and then add a rule. Okay. You so could you you could create a new group, but there is one by default. So that's an inbound rule. There you go. Twenty two. Twenty two. Create rule. Okay, so you just open port 22 for that group. Now create a key, which you didn't create it. So create, add, click on the create button, put a name, whatever. There you go, so save that private key, so save everything. And then yeah. you put it in a, in your dot SSH. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So where do I save the private key? I don't know. You have to you have to use Putty. Yeah, I have Putty. Uh, 
But it will Did log into something else. Yeah, but I don't know how, I don't know where you stick the keys with Putty. Yeah, it, it looks, yeah, if you want to, if you want to yes. scroll. You have to just mouse it. Yeah, there you go. Otherwise, I kept clicking. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. I kept yeah. clicking, I'm like, I didn't see this. Yeah. So you have to scroll. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like in the UI, in the, in the website, if you want to go down, you need to scroll. Okay. So when you create the instance, uh -huh. so go back, go back to instances. So it's at instance creation. Go, go, click oh, on, wow. click on add again. So I need to create a new instance. And then user data. Okay. So I need and in, and in there, you okay. just copy paste it. So can I, I can kill this instance and create a new yeah. one? Yeah. Okay. There we go. What do you put in the other one? So you copy and paste that. No, so .ssh is a directory, so you need to create a file in that directory, and in that fi and in that file you you stick the key. Well, c cd .ssh. Okay, you're not in there. Pwd. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay, so now you do uh, you do VI uh, Toto, okay. <laughs> and just stick the key in there. Okay, con uh, save. There you go. So you have the key. So now you can try to start an instance. Instance creation. Yeah, so that's fine. So, okay, so copy that. Do a copy. Okay, go back to your portal. Okay, just start another instance. Yeah. And now, you see, user data. So you'll stick control V. There you go. So now go back there and give it another name. Yeah, the, the script in user data uh, you need to give the user data at instance creation, okay? So if you started an instance without user data first, then just start a second one. <coughs> yeah, yeah. You cannot, give, uh, you cannot give the same name. You know, if you start two instances very quickly, don't give it the same name because CloudStack, <laughs> you know, needs some time to uh, kind of clean the, uh, it's, da it's database, so it's better to give different names. So go back, go back to the the other the Kodak uh, site. Okay, go down. Okay, so it's the next step. Then click on the yeah, click on user data 2.4. There you go, and then scroll down. Yeah, that's a bug in the. Sorry about that. <laughs> so click, click on people. Uh, it doesn't? No. Oh. So click, so click on the next, click, click on the next one. So click on the next one again. There you go. And now try to scroll down. <laughs> oh, the script is there. It's that line. Try to copy that line. Yeah, it's not rendering well on 
on IE. No, you need everything. Yeah, go all, go the entire line. Because, yeah. Ah! I didn't test on IE. You doing okay? Oh, yeah, I'm in the stock club. Did you do the, did you manage the user data? Yes. And you got the WordPress? Yeah. Yeah! The first you have to. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Great. So we got one guy with WordPress, two guys with WordPress, three guys with WordPress. WordPress, yes. Wasn't that easy? No? What do you think? It was easy. Do you guys have WordPress? Unfortunately. Who is lost? Okay, uh, yeah. SSH key, that's good. Security group inbound. Did you open 22 in your inbound? Yeah, click on it. Yeah, click on that. Oh, no, so go back. So click on inbound. Oh, there's no rule, so add. I did add the rule though. Oh, that's what I deleted before. Yeah. TCP 2222. <coughs> okay. So so try now. I don't think I don't think you need to restart the instance. <coughs> yeah. Ah, no. The key pair. Uh, yeah. The specify the key. Dash I. SSH. I put it inside of my old one, so I, I need to move it out. Okay. Are you good? Uh, you're in your dot SSH here. Oh, hold on. Where? Wh what's the? What's your path? CP. Okay. So that's you're in your dot SSH directory. Okay. So just create a file like a uh, foo bar or whatever. Dot dot uh, whatever, not even dot. Just just leave it exo dash key. And now in that file you put your the private key that you got from. Uh, so can you tell us about like your local or on the system? Yeah. 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 So yeah. So now that you now that you have instances running in the cloud, you can decide to do everything on those instances, or you do everything on your laptop. That's that's your choice. That makes sense. What I just said. Uh, <coughs> all the instructions are for Ubuntu. I, I I have nothing against CentOS. I just did everything with Ubuntu. <laughs> so you know it's app get uh, to get the Python package installer. I guess if you started a CentOS image and that you want to work in that CentOS instance, then it's going to be yum, uh, yum, what? Yum install? Yeah, yum install. It's probably still Python dash pip. Python setup. Yeah, Python setup. Yeah, something like that. That's what I'm going. But then you said SSH into. Did you manage to SSH into it? That's what I just did. But I had this key stored here. So what's it, what's in it? Just do a cat on that key. Okay. And what's so what's happening when you do the SSH? Nothing. Yeah. Yeah, 
make it uh, make it six zero oh, yeah, zero. Yeah, yeah. And then and then yeah maybe exit that uh, go go one step down in that in that dot SSH directory. Yeah yeah yeah. No, but do it do it chmod six zero zero the the name of the file. Okay, let me let me try that again. Make sure that it's good. Okay. Oh, that's strange. Running. Setting default. Ah, did you open 22? Yes, actually. Ingress TCP 22. Try try another instance maybe. Yeah, yeah. Launch another instance. If you start an instance from TDK Jupyter, like uh, you stop the instance from TDK Jupyter, that doesn't happen. Yeah, you you, have to you, you no, you have to start it with user beta. Yeah. <coughs> so the call underneath is uh, deploy virtual machine, and that it's that call that gets the user data as a as an argument. You good? No. no? Ah, dans ah, t'es dans Windows. C'est Pouty. T'as Pouty? Ouais. Alors, euh, il faut <rire> je sais pas où est-ce qu'on la met dans Pouty. Parce qu'il faut que bon, il faut que tu utilises Pouty parce que c'est ton client euh, SSH. Mais il faut trop, il faut voir comment dans Pouty tu fais pour euh, okay, pour mettre pour okay. mettre une clé. Ok. Okay. This command, let me know if there are the other what you need. Yeah, yeah, but it's not pass it's not pass to key. You have to give it like the actual path, right? So our so yeah, so what's what's the what's your key name? Toto. Toto. Uh oh yes. There you go. Okay, so the permissions of the key were wrong. And then, you know, you have to give it the real path. Path to key was just a... Sorry? How can I commit to the SSH? So you want to continue to commit even though I don't have the security of Yeah, that's just, an, that's just an example. So go back, to, go to your portal. Which portal? Well, the exoscale. Okay. So that's, that's your, the name of your instance. Exoscale default, okay, that's fine. Did you open, did you open uh, here? Did you open port 22? Yes. And you have your key? Yes. So you be, where did you put your key? That's the question? Yeah, so I have it here, here in the file. But where do I have to go? OK, so that's where you have to use PuTTY. Do you know PuTTY? No. So you, don't, you never use SSH? I use the SSH. I have it. How do you use SSH? Ah, oh, OK. But I mean, how can I enter here? So you need to figure out here. I don't, I don't know this client, but you need to figure out where you put the key. So I don't, I don't know. That's why you need to use uh, Linux, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. I'll let you know if I find it. <laughs> I'm making progress. So honestly, I don't know. Just Google it. <laughs> Sorry, I, 
I don't know. I haven't used Putin a long time, so I don't know where where you put how you put the key in there. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Okay, but you have to click here. Yeah. Okay, so stick it in there. Okay. And then here. Hold on. Go back to instance. Okay, you have your key pair. Okay, fine. Did you, in your security group default, did you open 80? Yeah. Okay, go. Go to your firewalling to check your security group. And you open 80. Okay. So now go to instance. Let's wait that it's uh, that. Okay. Well, I did it a couple of times. And, uh, oh, your instance is not starting? Yeah. Give it a different name, okay? Okay, let me do it. Hold on. Let's just refresh it. Ooh. I hope we're not going to have problems with the. Ooh, I don't like this. Do you break up already? <laughs> <laughs> so start another one with a different name, okay? Okay. Okay. So did you open did you open port eighty? Yeah. Click on it. Port eighty, okay. So I'm thinking did I need to get a bunch of things and turn data into that? So when I tried to copy and paste oh. it's all one line. Do I need to add the character turns or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. It needs it needs to look like a proper yeah. It needs yeah. to look like a proper uh, git, uh, bash script. Are we okay over there? On the on the portal, right? Go back to your portal. Top, top right corner. Click on your email. Account, account details. API. API. There you go. Oh, we have Cloud Monkey here. Right? Yes. Yeah. I have deployed an instance. You have what? You have deployed an instance with Cloud Monkey? Oh, my God. We have, we have some. It's kind of cheating, but please hold on. Oh, okay. Hold on. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, that's not good. Did you give it a different name? Yeah. Did you give it a name? No, I didn't give a name, so I'm assuming it automatically picks it up. Maybe, maybe, uh, spe maybe specify a name? Okay, let me try creating an instance from here to see if it allows me. If you're encountering problems with the, the the portal, they have uh, a pretty good system uh, for support <coughs> tickets, so we can try to stress their support ticket system. So you can, if you see any problems, you can submit a, a ticket. And I think they have 24/7 support. I'm not sure. Everybody found their API key. What's that browser? Chrome. Chrome is it? Chrome, yeah. Okay, I don't know. Try to log in. Log in in and out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's some lag here. 
Anybody having issues with the portal? Like kind of laggy? No? The what? Really? Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Oh no 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 no! Did you, um, where did you stick the the, uh, the private key? In API key? That's it, that's kind of different. Sh show me what you have in API key. Yeah, so that's not that's your that's your API key. What we want what we want in that file is your SSH private key that you generated. Right, is that the one that you got from when you, okay, so we want to use that one. Key. Oh, you could, passphrase? Oh, that's not, that's not the key that you got from them, is it? Did you get, did you get it, did you get it by email? Because you're missing the, the no, begin. Ah, uh, yeah. So you sh I think you need to have the the beginning, the top of the the line, which is begin private key. You know. Okay. So you pr they probably send it to you by email. Okay, I'll go get it there. If you okay. open if you open your email, you know, yeah. get just get it again and. Oh yeah, I'm missing the. Yeah, you're missing the begin yeah, private yeah. key and the. You doing good? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Sorry, what, did, what instance did you get? Did you get a 1204? Yeah. Yeah, 1204. Okay. You have an error in your SQL syntax. Show me the file. Yeah. Well, no, the, 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 yeah, the bash script that it's not really the oh. it's not really the manifest. Well, where's the bash? The bash is going to be in the SQL, right? Where does that end up? Uh, okay. Yeah, we're not. So what did you? I can show you what I copied and pasted. Oh, oh, so you copied? You, so you executed everything here? Yeah. So this is what I put into the user data. Uh, this. Yeah, but it when you. It does look like I got the uh, Etsy puppet was created. So I'm guessing. That so what? Yeah, go here. go to Etsy Puppet. What do you have in Etsy Puppet? Okay, and here. So if you do the Puppet apply here. Yeah, so that's what I was normally. Talking about. No, but not in the manifest directory in the root. Well, That one? Yeah, and that's where I got. Oh, yeah, okay. It's, it's, it, it specifies the full path. Hmm. Did you do Did you do the app get update and all of the, all of that? Yeah, like I said, I copied and pasted it from data. Huh. Can you try again? Can you start an instance again? And, and then now that you have it nicely here, just, yeah. Okay. By default, CloudMonkey doesn't operate doesn't operate as sync at last check. So when the director says you should do it, it's in the sync as, as a result. Really, the job's already run, unless you tell it to run as sync. Which one? The deploy virtual machine? Yeah. So 
Oh yeah, you can. Uh, yeah, that's right. There's a uh, there's something here with Cloud Monkey. You can set it up yes, differently. Yes, you can set it as synchronous. I know. I, you can set this, but you can you can set a you can set a song. No, no, it's not as it's not sync. That's set. Yeah. Equal. Yeah. Equal false. No. False. Okay. Okay. Ah ouais Ah, merci. Cool. Donc, tu as réussi ouais. Ok, let's do... A, it looks like people have moved on from the first phase. Ok uh, so everybody managed to sign up. Yes, everybody managed to create key pair security groups. Yes, if I don't hear no, that's fine. Everybody managed to start an instance, I think. Everybody found their API key. Okay, you have to click on your, uh, on your email address on the top right and then you go in account details and then there's the API details tab and then you just grab them from uh, from there, okay? Did everybody manage to get WordPress? I mean, I, no? You di it didn't work? Okay. I know he's trying again. You guys are still fighting your keys. Oh no, you're in. Good. Okay, so I'm gonna try to, <coughs> so raise your hand who didn't get WordPress? You didn't get WordPress? Okay. So I'll, I'll come, uh, I'll come find you. So the next step is Cloud Monkey. I know some have already started there with Cloud Monkey. Oops. So Cloud Monkey, if you are on Linux, uh, you can do it locally. Otherwise, you can SSH into that instance that you started, and then install Cloud Monkey there. As I said, it's using, it's going, you're going to use pip, and. If you don't have pip, you need to install it with app get, you know, dash y install python pip. <laughs> the last step with Cloud Monkey is to deploy a virtual machine. I know some of, the, some of you have already reached that step. So what's very interesting with Cloud Monkey is that it has 100% coverage of the, AP, of the Cloud Stack API, okay? So it's not, it's not the case with other clients, like we're going to see LeapCloud, okay? But CloudMonkey has 100% coverage of the API. Especially that in, uh, so what is that, in 4.2? We had a 4.2 list API? For, so for, I think in 4.2 we introduced a list API. API. So CloudMonkey can actually sync. If you type sync at the CloudMonkey shell, it basically makes a list API call to, uh, to your cloud and it's going to return all the APIs available, okay? Here. So here it doesn't work, why? It doesn't work because uh, Exoscale is still on 4.0, 4.0.1, okay? But if you're using it against, uh, I don't know who has 4.2 in production, um, I don't know, but if you're using 4.2, you can use the, the sync command to, to basically get that 100% coverage, which is very nice. Okay, uh, what I like with CloudMonkey also, you can choose your, your display you know, functionality if you want everything, uh, uh, I don't know how you say this, but uh, everything straight up, line by line. But I like, I like everything in tab, in tables, and <coughs> you can set up your tables with uh, a filter so that it's very powerful. Uh, of course, that's more of a tool for admins because if, you, if users you know, get that, they may find it a little bit uh, rough around the edges, okay? Uh, another thing with CloudMonkey, which is good, is that you can use it if you uh, write uh, bash scripts. You can, you can call CloudMonkey from bash scripts and then grab the results and things like this, okay? So very powerful. So after CloudMonkey, it's LibCloud. LibCloud is a Python module. It's an Apache project. 
Uh, and basically, it's the same thing. You install it with pip, and then you start you know, seeing what calls are, are available, and you're going to also deploy an instance with libcloud and, and do WordPress again. Okay? So I'll let you move on to uh, libcloud, and then I'm going to try to see the, those of you who, are, who don't have WordPress yet with the... Does that make sense? So you don't, okay, so where are you at? Oh yeah, you still have your problems? So I just know that with this uh, lib, I did, may they move to Firefox, which is which one I want it for, uh, it's just risky. Oh. It's something for other issues. Okay, so it's working better with Firefox? Yeah, but now uh, I started interesting to the user data, which is running, but then it's still. Did you open port 80? Yes. yes so uh, go in firewalling, this port 80 open, okay. So go back to instance. Your instance is running. Okay, so maybe it's just going through the Puppet manifest now. Yeah, it should take, I don't know, two, three minutes maybe? Uh, show me your instance, uh, your inst uh, which template did you use? The Ubuntu 12.04, and it didn't work? Did you open firewalling? Did you open port 80? Yeah, port 80 open. Okay. Oh, strange. So try. So try again. Start an in, start another one and sh at the at the step where you put in the user data, just sh just show me. Okay. Same same with you. No no no. I'm I'm. Oh, you got the work first. I can. I logged into this one. Yeah. Let's do that, but I'm not just running the work. Skip command. Uh, no command. Am I doing it something wrong? Hold on. Oh yeah, yeah, because that's uh, you don't need you don't need to put the. Uh, A dollar. You don't need to put the dollar. Copy paste uh, BSH, yeah, okay. Yeah, just when you guys start instances, you can you can stick with tiny, okay. You don't you don't really need a four gig uh, eight core machine for the workshop. <laughs> so just five five hundred meg is enough, you know. We use we used to have machines with sixty four, I guess, or less than that. Yeah. Go click on user data. Is there is there something? Yeah. So click create. Okay. So that's so you got WordPress. Did you did you manage to get past it? I'm getting there. I missed the API key that went before this. But did you manage to get the WordPress when you s put the script in the uh, user data? Oh, so you're in the Cloud Monkey, right? But did you do? Sorry, can I? Did you do this one? Yes, I, I ran that. Oh, you ran that, and you got and you got the WordPress website. Mm, huh. And it would find that out. What going to here? So click on instances. Got it. Is that is that the one that you started with the user data? Right. And in your default, you have port 80 open. Yes. Okay, so just. Uh, Copy the the IP address and and open it in your browser. No. So it didn't work. So that's what you should do. Okay. So if you, if you started the instance and let me show you. If you give me the so instances. When you do, you can try to create another one. In user data, you put the script, the bash script, okay, and then and then you run, and then that's gonna give you. Uh, this right. This this script goes in there. I did it. 
Oh, yeah, but you need to go down. You didn't select the entire script. OK, so I'm going to go down. Ah, sorry. Ah, that doesn't work. Yeah, going down doesn't work. <coughs> it wants to go to the next slide. Uh, that's that. Ah. See, I try to I try to get fancy with the website. <laughs> uh, try to. I, I think what they managed to do is this. Ah, here it is. Up. Okay. Yeah, you need to basically kind of do like a select to move to the bottom of the page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You cannot, you cannot use. Okay, so no, I, I did it on purpose so that you think. You have to think. All right, the instructions are wrong on purpose. HTTPS. Uh, <laughs> yes. So definitely. Yeah, and you have to open so the, firewall the host, 443. the host is wrong mm -hmm. because your cloud is not local host. Right. So you need to you need to find the proper endpoint. Okay. You need to find the proper path. And uh, then it's secure because, you know, so it's going to be true. Right. See? Uh, it says you can make it true. There you go. Yeah. See, you have to read. Uh, Use SSL secure equal to replace the host and pass with the one of the uh, for right. scale. Yep, you're right. <laughs> it's HTTPS, yes. No, no, no. That's fine because that's the that's the endpoint of Exoscale, okay. which is which is opened by them. Uh, yeah. So there is a typo, which is it's HTTPS. If you want, you can make me a pull request on those docs. <laughs> it's working. Oh, you're doing something else. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So in the Cloud Monkey configuration, no. When you in a, in Leap Cloud, when you get to that to that uh, step, you know, pay attention, uh, try to read, and then I made a mistake. <laughs> it's HTTPS here. Okay. So this means that this snippet here, that, that's wrong, OK? I mean, if you, it's not wrong, but that when you set that up, the host that needs to be your endpoint of your cloud, that's where the Cloud Stack API is being served. So in our case, that's going to be HTTPS API.exoscale.ch, and that's going to be slash compute. And then here, that's going to be secure equals true. Yes. So, so actually, yeah. Okay. So maybe that's my bad. Uh, well, no, that's fine. If you go to the next, if you go to the next step, you actually have a full script that you can uh, that you can try with the exascale. 443. Path equals slash equals quote slash compute. Okay, let me let me check something. Yeah, that room is too small. 
Okay, plan plan B. Plan B, docs. Yeah, don't put don't put HTTP. Don't put HTTPS. Yeah, try try host equals uh, API dot exascale dot ch. Yeah. Show me your uh, your host. What did you define in your host? Um, this with yeah. HTTPS. Yeah. So oh. go, go back. Just yeah. Host. Just type host equals. Yeah. So let's try host yeah. equals API. I mean. Just so use the host name as the host. Yeah. 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 Don't, don't put the HTTPS. Yeah. Yeah. No. Oh, no protocol. Host API. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. It just wants the host. <laughs> My bad. Uh, it's it's this one. Okay. Yeah, so it's a, uh, ah, oh, crap, I forgot a quote. <laughs> API.exoscale.ch, okay? No port. Hmm? No port. No port. Oh, no port. 
No, because secret secure equals true is gonna know that it's four four three. Yeah. So everybody is at the lip cloud uh, stage. No. Yes. No. no? Yes. You got it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. And I have those rules. Right. Okay. And then when I dot the accents, I put. Should put that script. Right. And put it in the tree. The user data. Yeah, just open a new tab. Go exoscale.ch. Right. So sign in. Hopefully, there you go. Yeah, so you don't have any VMs running. Oh, did it blow no. me away? Yeah, it looks like it. So I have to create a new instance? Did you create two accounts? Oh, oh no, oh, it's, oh, it's still there, but it stopped. Yeah, OK. So now I can start it. Well, so click select it, yeah. Right. And now click, uh, oh, yeah, it's kind of slow. Yeah, wait, That's yeah, here you go. So click on start now. Yeah, start. here you go. Let's wait. So it looks like, there you go, starting instance, there you go. So you put the script in the user data tab? Yeah, when I created that. Okay. So now what you should do, once this is running, if everything works, you should cook, right? Yeah, HTTP. Right. Okay, so is this Ubuntu 12.04? Okay. Were you able to SSH into it? Uh, no, I haven't tried. So let's try. And did you created the key, right? Okay, did you save the private key of that one? Over here on, on my system here? Yeah, yeah. No, that's probably one. Okay, so let's try to see if we can, if we can do this. Just create another key. Just click on add, create another key, click, click on create, yeah. put it, there you go, put whatever name, right, now copy everything here, yeah, in a, in a file in your .ssh directory, yeah, yeah. So we just need to make sure that we can SSH and then we'll, we can try again here. You good? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, hopefully you guys, I mean, you can, you know, of course modify <coughs> when you get to the interactive shell here. Okay, you see that uh, <coughs> I get I get these for as environmental variables. Okay, so that I just I just stored my keys as environmental variables. Uh, you don't need to do this. You can just in that script you can just stick the key API key equals quote stick the key, or you set it up as environmental variables like like I did. Okay, so you can modify this a little bit if you want.
Oh, don't use don't use the console. What should I use with that? Because you're not able to SSH into it. Yeah, that's that's it, it's 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 this one. Oh, you lost the connection. Just 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 kill that one and then SSH again. Okay, because the, the the console it's it's gonna be very slow. So now, did you did you set it? Did you everything? You now, but what you need to do is that you need to select everything and put it in the user data. Where where is the uh, where is the portal? Oh, this one. So what you need to do is that when you start the instance in user data here, you st you stick the script. So you do this, Control C, then you put the script right here. Now you you call that foo bar. Just click a micro, ten gig. That key, that key is fine. Try that. Firewalling, default 22. You need to open port 80 because it's being served as a web server. So that's default. This one is using default, so that should be fine. So we wait that it's running, and we're gonna. Okay, it's running. Now you take that, and if it works, once it's finished, you'll get WordPress. So you have to wait a little bit, you know. So it's not there yet. I mean, wait, wait a couple minutes. Hopefully, it will, it will work, and you'll get WordPress. Okay. Yeah. Try, try to use tiny instances, guys. Otherwise, tonight you're not gonna kill your instances, and then you're gonna try again tomorrow, and you're gonna figure out that all your money is gone. It's free money, yeah, but still. Oh, <laughs> uh, you did. You didn't install IPython. You don't have IPython. No, Gu, uh, what are you on? Are you on Ubuntu? Yeah. Just do uh, app get install. Python? Yeah. Okay. Or we'll, we'll see. Right, Python? It may be a different type. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's funny, you got the same thing. Okay, so that has nothing to do with us, man. It's really yeah, Git. Ooh. So, I, they saw their uh, unicorn slow. Yeah, yeah. Unicorn earlier, so. Can you, can, you, can, you, can you try to Google and maybe get on Twitter with GitHub and see if they are posti posting anything? Looks like, looks like GitHub is having some problems. Yeah, install install IPython. App get oh. app get install IPython. That's my bad. Two L's. Oh, sorry. And IPython uh, lower. Yeah. It's all lower. Lowercase. And if you guys see things like in uh, you know in the book that you think uh, need to be improved, just either send me a note or a tweet or make a pull request later. Like here, for example, I forgot to tell you to install IPython. So you're good? You're trying? Yeah, you should be able to run it from your own machine. 
Uh, no. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, and from here, you're, you're having problems from here? Well, I just uh, I had to disable SSL's. Uh, oh, check. Right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so. Um, Yeah, but it may not be. Okay. You shouldn't have to disable. Com comment that out. You shouldn't have to disable Wait, because their their certificate is. Uh, if I leave this and I run it, I get uh, a message that says, you know, must be Chris's founder to take it back. Oh. Do uh do how do you manage packages on your machine, uh, on your on your Mac? Well, I mean, I can I can do it through China. Like something oh, you can do it. You can do it from the terminal locally. I thought you were on a on the instance. Oh, uh, this is the instance, but I can. That's the instance. We can set up a new terminal. But from but from. Yeah, but that's a terminal locally. Yeah, we, we, uh, here's a terminal on the instance. What yes. Do you, what do you, what is it you're asking? I'm no, I, no, I'm, I'm wondering why it's not finding the, the certs through, through, through PyCharm on your local machine. Yeah, well, I don't know, but if I, um, you know, if I just open up, like, uh, you know, this guy here. Uh, yes. I, no, unfortunately, I'm not, uh, I haven't provided a login, so maybe if I just go to, like, Uh, no, it doesn't give me a message about the search, right? Just no. Even though I access the right. HTTPS. Right, 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 right. So I don't think it's a. It's something I have to do specifically for the. For I think for it's, it's a I think it's a pie charm issue. Because. I'm, I, can you can you try to to take that script and run it from your local terminal? Because their their certificate, I'm 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 positive their certificate is valid and and properly signed. Yeah. Okay. And if we if we just, uh, do you mind? No problem. Because we shouldn't have to do this. Hmm. I think you're presuming a bit more Python experience is going to be denied here. This is weird. Um, if, we, if we disable it, come back to uh, the default. Let me connections. Uh, no, no so images. Let's, let's try. Let's try this. Uh, let's let's try it that way with that different. Uh, like that, and let's try. It. weird. That's strange. I thought that this was set by default to Mac. What do you use to manage um, packages on, on your machine? 
uh, general packages, general uh, Mac packages. There is no, well, there's, there's there's no, no Mac, right? I mean, you could yeah, use I mean, like Homebrew or something like that. Yeah, there right. Do you use do you use yes. Homebrew or yeah, Mac ports? Yeah, for, uh, yeah. You can. So is there is there a way to install the the, the CSRT? Uh, shit, I don't remember how it's called, but the uh, you're probably missing. Well, uh, here on the you're probably missing the CSRT on OS X. There is a it installs a package. Because there is a directory on the Mac where the <coughs> basically the all the information for the CAs are stored, right? So I mean, there's a feature. But no, but it, but it looks like it's not there because I don't understand why it's thinking that the that the certificate is wrong. Yeah, here you go. With lib cloud, and then it says, um, you know, see on OSX curl CA bundle. Oh, okay, so so do you have? Can you get? Can you get it with brew? How oh, is it brew install? Yeah. Curl CA. Is it underscore? I don't know if it's. I don't know if it's. I know. I, I know you can get it with uh, Mac ports like this, but. Dash. Yeah. Maybe. Because that that may not be available to. Uh, okay. Uh, you now you didn't print. In the main, there's no print statement. <laughs> Just do a print con list images. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How, how are you doing? So your, your WordPress didn't WordPress work. So, so there may be issue with WordPress because apparently Git was was having problem. GitHub was having problems. So it's nothing to do really with us. So is it is it still going on? Oh, they put something up. So what what's going on? Okay. Yeah. So just skip that that uh, that step. So what if you look at that bash script in there? It's basically cloning a GitHub repo. And since Git is kind of uh, having, GitHub is having problems right now, uh, that's why we're getting errors when we're trying to fetch that package. So try uh, so exit exit that. Try uh, Python. Just type Python. No, just type Python. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's get let just get a, a get shell. shell. Yeah. So it's two seven three. Okay. So try uh, try imp import IPython. Right. Just just like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, So import ipython. Import ipython. Embed. That will work. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys, it's pretty, it's pretty warm here. So if you guys want to take a break and go get a drink, you know, definitely go for it. Did you did you solve the IPython issue? 
So did you get a, a problem with terminal dot embed? No? No, so I did well so first we did app get. Yeah. That didn't work. So then, then I did a get install dash dash hungry typo. Uh, and it was still working. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I know this is, you know, if some of you manage to finish everything, I, I do think it's a lot of information, okay? So. So once you have, once you have the shell, you should see that it's easier to discover all the, uh, the commands available from libcloud. So in the, when you start the shell, you can then do a con dot list tab tab, and IPython gives you tab completion. So you're gonna see all the, uh, all the method available, which is very nice. <coughs> and then to create a node, you know, you'll have that create node command. And again, you know, you can do WordPress with, uh, with libcloud. So how did you start your driver? Show me how. Okay, hold on. Hold on, show me. Can, can you make that terminal bigger? Okay. So go, go down. Okay. So uh, provider error. Not implemented. Yeah. Oh, actually, that actually did I spell that? Not implemented for this drivers. Deploy node. No, that should work. I, I tried it yesterday. I, I, just ah, I know, I know. Ah, I, I think I know what's going on. ID or the name or what the image is, what the image is and size. So um, what do you have in image? Is image defined? I can just say images. Uh, images is the template. Right. right. And, uh, so I in image, the in, the, in the create node, uh -huh. you need to put the UUID. So you, if you put image equals quote, the UUID quote. Oh. Same thing for size, just the UUID of the. Yeah, so we move all the square brackets. So there might be a problem with the deploy node in the interactive shell. No, that's what, that's what I said. GitHub is having some problems, so I don't think that's going to work. That the script, the script that you put in user data, it's fetching a project on GitHub to uh, basically that has the puppet manifest and so on. And GitHub is having problems. So that, that fetch is not, you know, work. Ah! He has it. You ask him. He knows. So let me check. So these are your security groups. Default, you have. Okay. And uh, where is the instance? That's this one. So that's the. This one is default, okay, so port 80 is open. And that's 28 to 14. OK, 
Okay. The only thing I can the only thing I can say is try again. It might be you know you, you may have made it when there was a problem with GitHub and then he, he got through and then you know. And of course, you know, if you are struggling with one section, you can always move to uh, the next one. I, yeah, I recommend the last step, which is the EC2 interface, because that's pretty cool. So, okay, what's going on? So it's giving you this error. Okay, yeah, it shouldn't, it shouldn't wait. So. How do we go? How do we go up here? Oh. So that that little thing right there. <laughs> oh. uh. So what did you do earlier? You did the driver, and then you did. Oh yeah. So it's secure equals true. Yeah, yeah. Your driver, your driver is wrong. So just kill, kill that. There you go. So go back to the yeah. Okay, secure equals true. Yeah, we can we can t we can type everything. Uh, just just make it cap capital true, just in case. <laughs> yeah, uh, just the T. Sorry. Yeah. There you go. Host equal quote API dot compute dot ch. The single quote. Uh, Ape, yeah. So n remove remove host. No, just I type. That very broad. Yeah, but just in case. API dot compute dot ch. No, sorry. So <laughs> exoscale dot dot ch. Okay. And quote. Okay. Let's not put the port. So delete the port. And in path, let's just put uh, equal quote slash compute. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's try list images. -da -da -da! <laughs> what? Yeah, it looks like it's kind of, uh, he, he got it, but he didn't get it. So I'm thinking that uh, the GitHub problems may be, okay. you know. So when he deployed the node, it just didn't run the script. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's trying to run the script, but then it's uh, it's basically That's failing on the Git and. Okay. I can't problem the website because sometimes I can't find. Which website? The exoscale.ch? Yeah. <laughs> so again, you're on Windows. <laughs> Is that Internet Explorer? No. No. Okay. I'm in between Mac and Windows. Yeah. Yeah. No. Sometimes. Yeah. No. I I, I see what you're saying, and I, I I don't know I don't know why. Okay. Working? It's a no. Ah, okay. no attribute ID. What's that? What's what's the problem with uh, what's the problem with string is no ID? String object has no attribute ID. What's that? String object has no attribute ID. Mm. Oh, service offering ID size dot ID. So the list images work, right? Yeah, you, you got you got that right. 
Ah uh, no, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. Yeah, yeah, that's not that's not gonna work. The image needs to be an image, an image object. So this is this is this is wrong. Okay. So what you're gonna do, for example, <coughs> you do you do sizes equal. Okay. okay? And you do images equals con dot list images. Okay. And now these these are lists. Okay. okay? So, for example, we're going to take the first one, uh, which is micro. Okay. So now, <coughs> basically, we're going to do, we're going to delete that. Yeah, that's, my, that's my fault. It's a, you, you pass, a, you pass a, an object to it. Yeah. So you, we're going to put uh, images, and we're going to just take the first one, maybe. Oh, okay, uh, okay let's, let's just try, the, let's just try okay. the first one. It's an array, oh, and then uh, size equal sizes, let's just take the first one. So it, it may not be Ubuntu, I don't know what the first one is, okay? Um, Addressing this. Okay, mm -hmm. I had to delete something. What's this? Oh, oh, okay. Exceeded. Yeah. Report exceeded. Yeah, how many instances do you have, Arnie? Uh, yeah, they may, yeah, they may have put a restriction on the number of instances that we can run at one, one time with that card, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So submit a support ticket and say this is unacceptable. No, no, no. If you do it locally, that should be that should be local. Yeah, but did you did you run? Did, where is your did you run EC2 stack? Where? Yeah. So you see, you're running the server on zero 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 five thousand. Okay. So go back. To the other one, what's going on here? Did I retype? I just copy and paste from which I can. Yeah, so the way maybe, did you register the user? Yeah. So it's configure easy. that should be your uh, exoscale API and secret key. Yeah. And, I just and then EC2 register. Because successfully registered. Successfully registered. Hold on, let me check. Hello. It is doing that register this one and then registering before we have. Did you register? That no, no, that, sh that should be fine. Okay. Um, EI, EC2 stack, there you go. Cool. So those are up right here. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so let me let me check because I'm curious to know if that works. Ah. Uh, and that that error. I've had that error before. Uh, where is it running? Yes, yeah, so it's getting the request. So what's happening here? It's describe availability zones.
me check. Make, make sure you go through the, yeah. <coughs> okay. but you're, you're almost there. I've, I've had that error before. It's something, it's something silly, but I, ne I need to look. No, 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 no. Hold on. List. No, no, that's because list. I have to do tab, tab. Oh, what's going on? It's not, it's not responding? I think it's because you just put different pictures. Your tab doesn't work? No, no, not tab. Your tab doesn't work. Tab doesn't work? I can even search for the list. Yeah, yeah, no, but that's that's because yeah, list zones. The given command doesn't exist. I got the API key. right? So I just downloaded I just got a cloud stack thing to it. No, but so hold on. So where are you here? Which which machine are you on? I'm on my machine. Oh, that's that's your machine. It's a CentOS machine. Yeah. So just let's just let's just kill that. <coughs> okay. And how did you install CloudMonkey? So for the CentOS, I just followed this step here. Yes. So you installed it with pip install CloudMonkey? No, you have install the cloud. And, e and easy install CloudMonkey? Yeah. Okay. And then Cloud Monkey. Ah. Okay. Uh, sorry. Oh, what did I do? Oh, this is just a tab. Oh, sorry. So check, maybe it's a Python version. Wh what Python do you have? Because the CentOS is Python six, uh, 2.6. Uh, six. I'm having the same issue on Ubuntu. 2.6. Uh, maybe, maybe it's not working with 2.6? Oh, I can show you. Maybe. Hold on, let me, let me, um, can you try to install CloudMonkey but on the Ubuntu instance? On uh, that's on Exoscale? So I have, that's my Ubuntu instance. Mm -hmm. Okay, I get there, but if, if I type, type list, space, tab. There you go. Oh, list, oh, list. So now type, type zones, for example. No, that you're not allowed. <laughs> okay. So zones. There you go. Uh, okay. And so now, and now, if you want to, if you, if you, if you want to make it a little bit filter, cuter, yeah. you put a filter, name, comma ID, comma ID for example. Oh, okay. Struggling or. Uh, you need to put quotes. So go on. Uh, wait, ho hold on. Show me. Show me what. What? How did you start that shell? Okay. How did you start? Oh, with Python. Okay. Yeah. So it needs to be API key equals single quote. Ah. Single quote. Oh, so these spaces are take those out, right? Put a single quote. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same with all this. Yeah. It's equal yeah. single quote. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Everything is a string. <coughs> yeah. So at the end. But that's not gonna be this. So host. So delete. Well, delete. The, I was, uh, I was looking at the instructions and figuring out that they had to be right. either local or this. But it, so it's not this. It's going to be api.exoscale.ch. Right so 
Here you go. <coughs> that one, and don't specify the port. Don't. No. Here. So we move the port. Just port equals port, or just remove Just the remove it. The reason being that you're specifying secure equals true, so the driver knows that it's going to be HTTPS on 443. And then path equals compute, fine. So you can remove that line, host, because you're, you're writing it that, yeah, remove that line. There you go. So I got the two keys with <coughs> no spaces and single quotes on each one. Yeah. The path is compute, and then? The driver, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's so right. that means this has been messed up too, because I still, if I were doing it locally, it'd have to be yeah. like this. Single quotes, yeah. Yeah. So this is another thing I have found that you said that maybe in the password and keys. No, you shouldn't have to, you shouldn't have to set a password. Yeah, that's wrong. Uh, oh yeah, but that's because you're doing console. Don't do console access. Did you figure out the putty instruction? No, the thing is like this, the dot key is still right in the end of the brackets, so I kind of put it somewhere. I need to modify it every time I say the dot key. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to be able to log in. With, uh, <coughs> hold on, I think, yeah, show password. Try, okay, yeah. try that. Yeah. <coughs> Oop, Thank sorry. you. It I worked? I really re appreciate the recent email. Yeah, statement. yeah. And it worked. And it worked. Show me. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Don't you think it's great? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. <laughs> so we got one person who jumped to the last step and got it working. You did? <coughs> you just keep, you just keep the, uh, the vagrant stuff? Yeah. <coughs> and you got the EC2 stuff running? Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thanks. So on the EC2 stuff that's at the end, <coughs> you guys may know that uh, CloudStack has built in a AWS EC2 interface, um, but I'm actually in favor of removing removing it because that's going to lighten up the code. Uh, that that AWS API interface is a big chunk of code. It makes the packaging complex and so on. So I would like to remove it and replace it with what's in that, um, what's in that uh, example at the end. That's basically a separate Python application that we wouldn't put in the source code of CloudStack. Um, what? No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well. What time is it? Is it four? Three or five. Three or five, okay. Uh, so the vagrant, yes. So did I assume that we were on the Mac? Probably. Well, I fixed the SSH first. So there's an SSH okay. I have a box. Yes, you have a box, which is set up with a CloudStack provider. Right. And what's happening? It's saying it doesn't have a CloudStack provider. Oh, did you install the plugin, the CloudStack plugin? Yeah, so uh, go, go back there. If you show me the error message. It says cl no cloud stack provider. So click. Okay, so you need to do a vagrant. Uh, look at the instruction. No, did I miss that step? Uh, go go before. Oh, there it is. Vagrant plugin install vagrant dash cloud stack. Yeah, I mean, it's, I'm running this and I just get, you know, it gives me a home screen. So is that what he's talking about as well? I mean, if I just run Vagrant by itself, it just gives me a screen that's just there. So if I try plugin, mm -hmm. is it package or is it a plugin or something? Mm, hold on. Do you mind? Uh, vagrant. 
that vegan plugin install vegan plugin install vegan the shortcut okay so what's going on vegan test the plugin install well these are what commands to do what were the available <laughs> commands Oh, that's too old. Okay, so uh, how did you install it? F get. Yes, so uh, F get update. <coughs> yeah, you probably have a, a vagrant that's too old. That's a big one to sign the request, right? Is it? Yes. Sorry, you you you're on the instance, right? I'm yeah, not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not messing up with your machine. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. so, anyway. so did you get? Did, how did you get it? Did you grab the? the uh, you downloaded that one? Yes, into the beta package just now. And which version do you have? Vagrant dash v. Yeah, that should be good. And if you do Vagrant plugin install, it doesn't work? I understand it. Trans transient network issues. I'm thinking, I'm thinking that's a GitHub problem because the, the, the plugin is being fetched from GitHub. Thank you. Thanks for coming. No, I don't think that's I don't think that's us uh, causing a, a bandwidth issue. No, but I'm saying like maybe a API remedy issue for GitHub. Oh. Did they tell me we're all set us up as we come to GP or no we're hitting push up? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I doubt it. I don't think we're gonna go get up there. No, I mean do they have a firm IP limit? Well one, eh? Same one we can had before. Yeah, can we do Oh yeah. It didn't. It doesn't but upgrade uh, uh, Vagrant automatically. No. Oh, it is a new version. No. Okay. That, that's how you installed it. Yes. Okay. So maybe what we need to what we need to do is uh, is try try there try to do it with their package. Ah, oh, crap. What can I put it to screen? Actually, yeah. 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 Okay, fine. <laughs> and then now that stuff is done, it's still not going to work. Cool. Yeah, it done. It, it yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it wasn't okay. working. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's okay, I already hit the lead. So that, that may still hit an error if we have problems with GitHub. <laughs> Thank you. Did you enjoy it? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> No, I think I think he probably stopped uh, stopped here. I've never time I've never done this tutorial like this, so I've never timed it. So it's probably, you know, maybe a full day. <laughs> uh, okay. I love it when you we have to stare at a screen. Yeah. Hey, how long is the book set? That's right. Ah, no. Kill, kill that. So we move the quotes here.
and put the closing parenthesis. Yep. Enter. Is it what you created? No, no. Hold on. Did you create? Did you create those variables? No. Oh, I actually want to get these IDs too. Okay. So let's 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 try that. Yeah. So you didn't define images. Did you actually put the ID number there? No. <coughs> that I I made a mis I, I made a mistake when I told that told that to them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this. We're gonna define the array, and then we're going to define uh, the list of images. Uh, pop, 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 pop. Like that. Okay. So now those are arrays. So if you type, <coughs> that's the array of sizes. And now we're gonna go here, and this is going to be. We're going to take the first one just, sizes. just, just to try. Okay. Sizes and then images is fine. And if we go to the to the UI, there you go. And and you see, since I took it from, uh, I, I, yeah, I took the first one. It ends up being a Windows one. So t <laughs> so so try to figure out the one. I mean, if you know oh, if. You, if you know like Python, it's easy yeah. to grab through that array and find the, uh, the, the, yeah. the, the one that's uh, CentOS, Ubuntu, whatever. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So now you have a Windows machine running. <laughs> Actually, click, click on that. If you click on the uh, console. Just, yeah, just, no, no, just wait. There you go. You get your, uh, <laughs> you get your Windows very <laughs> good. <laughs> um, I'm getting invalid credentials trying to run the Python script. Uh, I've got my environment variable set. Okay. Can can we move? Uh, can can you come here? So that, oh, or if you move, I uh, yeah. <coughs> so what I did is I. Uh, Copy this. I set these environment variables. Mm -hmm. um, I also added a host and a was it host and path path right, yeah. and then added it to there. So, so sh show me the show me the session. Yeah. So it's a, do you want to look at the yeah? Script? Did you just do you mind? No, okay. go for it. Okay, thank you. Uh, so you remove this. So this terminal that's that's on this machine, right? Yes. So it's on a host. Secure equals true. Host path. Your keys. And you and you did this. <coughs> so this is we sh we shouldn't do this. Why not? It won't go otherwise. Yeah, but so what you're missing, I think. How do you manage packages on your Mac, Brew? Uh, the script for what kind of packages? Uh, general packages. Do you use Brew or Mac ports? No, neither. No. <coughs> okay, because it's like. It's like uh, him. We're missing the uh, the bundle of CS certificates. Well, the, the certificates certificates are handled in Keychain. Yeah. And so I know there's no interface between I think uh, yeah. Python and Keychain. So that's why I commented it out for now. If it works, S if you comment or if you uh, set it to false, you know what I mean? Because everything worked up and up until now. Oh, okay. So. Okay. So let's uncomment. And if you want to run it and see what it does, and then put it back in and, and see what happens. But okay, so let's try. And what's so what's in your uh, what did you define? Well, how are they called? Um, whatever was in the script. So, uh, Exoscale key. You just type EMV, you'll see it. Uh, I use corn chips. Oh. Okay, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> so if I do uh, And 
And those are your keys. Mm -hmm. No, that's not the right. The secret key is wrong. Show me the secret key. Yeah, the secret key is wrong. Q L Q L R Q L R. You're missing. You're missing three at the beginning. Okay. We're okay or we're too much information. <laughs> okay, and now you now you can? Yeah, with that password I Oh good, 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 good. Perfect. Uh not at this not at this stage, no. Just five hundred. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I should have just run it here, right? If you in, if you installed, if you ins okay, enter, what? enter. Okay, so you didn't install uh, libcloud. If you go back to the previous did. step. I'm pretty sure I did. Okay, no, I did again. Now. Okay. Yeah, did you do pip install cloud? Uh, no. Oh, yeah. Go one, yeah. <laughs> installation pip install oh, Apache. I So yeah, but uh, yeah, exit no yeah, conf. Yep. Yep. Now I should be able to run. So try. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Did it install the, uh, the plugin yeah, finally? Um, yeah, yeah, it installed the plugin. I'm now, I'm, I built the boxes and now I'm. Ah, cool. You've never used these boxes? Yeah. So, in fact, <coughs> I mean, they're just files. Mm -hmm. uh, and they are fake. Basically, the <coughs> if you look at the, the, the project that you clone to create those boxes, um, basically, it's just a, a file that says uh, use this UUID, which is a UUID of uh, the image on Exoscale. Okay? <coughs> so, in fact, in those images, you, you don't have anything except a, it's a tarball of like a metadata. There is nothing in there, right? And when you and wh what's so what's going to happen is that when, when from your machine, when you're going to use Vagrant to to start the instance, it's basically going to pick up the right template on Exoscale and boot that instance. Yeah, so I here you just added the oh box uh, lo locally. You didn't, you didn't start. I actually didn't move it over to. Uh, right, so now you need to. To the next page. There you, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the workflow normally is I want to create a development environment. Mm -hmm. so, um, Thank you. Mm-hmm. So, so if you use Vagrant uh, locally and you wanna you wanna test uh, your development environment locally with VirtualBox, in that case, indeed, you're going to download uh, an ISO of CentOS or Ubuntu, and when you boot with Vagrant, it's going to start that that ISO with uh, VBox. Okay. Um, when you use it with the cloud, we don't we don't transfer the templates. 
okay? We don't transfer the ISO, we don't register the template. So we're just uh, creating kind of a fake vagrant box that points to a uh, exoscale. So basically, that, that workflow is a little bit broken in the sense that if you test locally with a Ubuntu 12.04 that you've downloaded on your machine, uh, it's not gonna be exactly the same template that's on exoscale in that particular case. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, if, if it was a cloud where you can register template as a user, you could potentially, you could potentially register the, your own image, your own template, but Exoscale doesn't let you do that. They don't want you to register a template. So you use what they have and then you, you configure on the fly, which is, which is not bad, I don't. I don't know if it's a security conscious decision or not, but uh, definitely uh, letting people register random templates may be an issue. <laughs> Asynchronous, but I saw that it was actually looking for it. Not like on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you are, so in Cloud Monkey you can use uh, set async uh, true. Set async block. Yeah, right. True. Uh, don't put equal. Space true. Right. I mean, you have to you have to you have to you have to deal with it, right? Because if, if uh, you know you launch an async uh, operation and that you're assuming that it's finished, then you start something. So, uh, I mean, you have to well, you have to, yeah, you have you have to be careful with it. <laughs> How are you doing? Doing okay? Where are you at? Um, nothing really. It's about right now. Oh, cool. I've had issues with Python and some things. And it's okay. It's different. And Cibo is very nice because it's really a push. Uh, so, you know, Puppet Chef, they, had, they have that concept of a, a server that basically has the recipes. And Ansible is really a, a complete push over SSH. So you have the playbooks locally and then it's going to SSH the, the, the playbooks and then execute them. So it's, uh, it's a little bit of a old school, you know, when the, we didn't have uh, Puppet Chef and, uh, and whatnot and we were doing things over SSH, you know? Yeah. So I ran Vigor in it on the, um, you know, uh, a cloud instance. Mm -hmm. And then I asked it as a vacant file and to provide SSH start as dpath. Um, you know, there is no slash users. Uh, uh, okay, so hold hold on. So yeah. So, so show me your show me your thing here. Uh, so okay, hold on. Do you mind? No problem. <laughs> oh, the vagrant file is here. Okay, and what's in what's in the vagrant file? Oh, okay, so you put that, so it's SSH your name. So the private key path, it's the path, it's, yeah, okay, so that's, that's bad instruction for me. For me, that's uh, path to your private key, uh, your, SS, your exoscale private key that you created. Okay, uh, so I think it's on my location. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> because Vagrant is going to SSH into that box. Vagrant, wh wherever you're running Vagrant, it's going to SSH into that box to basically uh, run the configuration scripts. Make sense?
just gonna step out for a minute. I'll be right back, guys. Okay. No, oh no, you got drinks? Okay. They have cupcakes outside. I use gitbook.io. <coughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not that good with HTML. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it looked good. So it's all written in Markdown. And then, you know, uh, that, that tool just builds the page automatically. I think it looks good, so I was like, hey, I'm going to. If you click on the, on this, edit and oh, that shouldn't happen. Yeah, but you should be, you should be able to, you should have been able to see the. Oh okay, yeah, because it's edit anyway. So yeah, so close close that and see if the another another of the uh, about the author maybe. Repositories, Rancid, yeah, that's the one. So uh, if you go scroll down, and up, up. So it's all, it's all. Uh, click on this summary that markdown. Yeah. So you see that, you know, that's the actual tutorial. It's all marked down, and then you know the the references to the directories that has other markdown files, and then the tool builds the HTML. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty nice. So they have cupcakes outside, you know, get a drink. You guys are doing great. <laughs> you scared everybody away from 
Did I? Yeah. Maybe I assume too much Python knowledge. Oh, you have to create. You have to create it. <coughs> so do a do a vi vi WordPress .sh, yeah, and insert and put the uh, the script from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. If you're doing the vagrant stuff, who is who is trying the vagrant stuff? Yeah, a couple over there. Okay. After the vagrant, we can skip Ansible, because otherwise, I think your your head's gonna blow. And and then you know the last one would just be to do the uh, the EC2 interface if you want. But since you are you are doing the Ansible, right? So yeah, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. Steve Rolls is in the house. Hey, Good. So did, 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 you, did you manage to do the uh, Vagrant? No, I just don't. I don't okay. So what about S3? The cloud stack doesn't do S3. Yeah, in the sense that cloud stack doesn't offer an S3 compatible object store. But Not if you, no, yeah, but it doesn't, it doesn't offer it. It can use an S3 object store, for, as you said, for secondary storage, okay. which is the storage that where you can store the, uh, the images, the, the templates. But yeah, there was a kind of a proof of concept of exposing an S3 sometime, sometime back. It's still in the, it's still in the code. <coughs> But uh, it's, I think it's broken right now, and it's, it's backed by uh, NFS. So it's not, it's not a true object store in the sense of chunking the data, replication, and, and so on. Ansible doing? The EC2? EC2. Okay. But did you manage to get Ansible going a little bit? Or? I got Ansible itself to work. Okay. But again, I'm kind of So be careful here. Say yeah, say yes. Yeah. And do M1 dot small time. Yeah. That that EC2 interface is a is a Python Flask application. Flask is a Python micro framework that's uh, very nice if you're trying to build uh, REST APIs. So it's uh, it has a very clean way of allowing you to define, you know, uh, URIs and then uh, basically processing those URIs depending on the verbs that are being used. If you ever want to build a, a quick 
uh, REST API. I think that's a good. Uh, Why do you have two uh, so, so we have one, which is uh, the main one that's in the source code right now. But basically, there is no development on it right now. <coughs> so it's kind of abandoned. Uh, very few people know, actually, how it works. Uh, so I don't think it's a good situation. So that's why I wanted to, uh, to actually create a new one, uh, which would, which is, which, yeah. And, the, and so that, that Python-based one is just, uh, it's brand new. CC, CC failed. Where? What, because where? What are you? Tr what are you trying to install? Oh yeah. So you don't have GCC on there. Do you have? Do you have Brew? Do you have Brew or Mac ports? So Brew, in Brew install. G Brew install GCC. <coughs> so make make sure that you register the uh, the users properly and check the configuration files to make sure there's like no typo in there or something. So that should be good. Now try the cat. Uh, so same thing, tilde slash dot, dot ec2 stack, uh, ec2 stack dot conf. Yeah. Zero, five, config, HTTPS, system, sign in. OK, that's good. Now are you running the server? Yes. So you have to run ec2 stack. Kill them all. Yeah. Oh, two processes. Oh, yeah, might be. May maybe, yeah because of the way the way flask works okay so did you register the user ec2 stack register yeah, yeah? okay okay yeah yeah and now you can set uh, here I say it uh, some, somewhere. Uh, you can s you can set the output. <coughs> you can change the output format. I think it's in the previous one. Uh, yeah. So in the in that AWS config file, you can set up output equals table, and you'll and you'll see. We have it. We have just after output equals table. And 
you can go all the way through, uh, you can create key pairs and you can create security groups and then you can start instance. Good, we have the EC2 interface running here. <coughs> So that's that's not here. That's not right. Uh, eighty eighty. That's not. You're not. You're not. Okay. Let me let me try here. So what? Post. Okay. So let's try. Don't put the port. Put true. Capital T, small r u e, enter. Okay, and then list images. Yay! It might be so. That's when you install. That's when you install uh, libcloud. No. Uh, no. Um, Ansible. Yeah, but why? Why are you trying to do the parameter code? It's it's it's, uh, it's for the Ansible. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 that should have been a dependency on uh, libcloud. Oh, that's strange. Yeah, this is an awesome error question. Could it be uh, if you did that configure and did the commit about the distribution of some sort of request over to it, and uh, you know, and run update on the request lower to So you install the C2 stack from, from pip, yeah. right? And what did what did the Google search return? Request capital. Yeah. So, come, so you're doing it, you're doing it on your Mac, right? Yep. Um, I don't know. What Python version do you have there? So you did 
OK, so you did two, two, <coughs> two things fully, so two stacks. OK. Try uh, pip install dash dash upgrade EC2 stacks. Go figure. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So you're gonna run that server locally on local host. You're gonna make requests to it, but that server is going to forward request to Exoscale. Unfortunately, if you take multiple cards, you cannot recharge that same account with a, another coupon. But if you take, you know, if you take three cards, then you can open three accounts. <laughs> yeah. Dash instance ID. Oh. Dash dash instance ID. Oh, so you managed to create you managed to create one? No, because I already had my two and I didn't want to destroy one because we had another one, so Oh okay. So it was so now you're trying to restart one that was stopped. I'm going to give myself props. <laughs> Good job. Good job. If you have any suggestions, you know, again, send me uh, something on Twitter or an email or make a pull request on the documentation. And of course, I'll be here tomorrow and Friday so you can, you can find me again. Uh, so the development on the EC2 stack is done by uh, two kids. I call that kids because they are 21 year old <laughs> in in Ireland. Uh, so I work I work with them. They did that for a, a, a college project, and I basically kind of mentored them, you know, to how to architect it and things like this. We have an equivalent for GCE, which is called GStack, and that gives you a Google Compute Engine compatible interface with the same same framework. So yeah, definitely. Also, if you if you guys want to contribute to this, for example, the to the EC2 stack, uh, definitely look it up on GitHub, and then you know we need we need more API coverage in there. Uh, so that's that's a great project to contribute if you guys want to contribute some Python to uh, to CloudStack. That'd be. It's it's thirty percent. Yeah. So it's less than the AWS API package that's in, in the source code, but <coughs> we're going to uh, we're going to bring it up uh, bring it up to speed pretty fast. So you're running the server now in another terminal. You need to, OK, that's the other one. OK, describe images. <coughs> so try to. Yeah, it's funny. I, I've seen that error as well. And the others have seen it. And I don't know exactly when it's triggered. Can you check your configuration files? So in tilde dot aws slash config. OK. 
okay, that looks okay. And then look up the uh, tilde slash dot EC2 stack. EC2 stack dot conf. So kill kill the EC2 stack uh, server. Okay, just then relaunch. I'll have to I'll have to look what's what's the problem. Try again. Do a bit of this. Yeah, I, I, there is something weird. Yes. If I come here and put, you know, the uh, localhost and then my HDIC and my CCP, it doesn't have a CCP argument. Uh, hmm. And this argument, right? It's an argument. What argument? It needs to escape something or float it? Or yeah. Yeah, your dash might be a little bit. But otherwise, that looks good. You ran into a, uh, can any chance you can show me your history on uh, EC2 stack register? I, uh, EC2 stack register, the uh, P, P, yeah. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I guess that there's, there might be a parsing issue because of your dash in the queue. I don't know. Can you tr can you try again? Maybe like there's a space somewhere or something, or uh, is it there's I don't know. <laughs> you ran. You ran into. If that the dash, the dash looks suspicious, but this is weird that. No, it's actually, so you're not going to be happy about this, but so it's actually storing your secret key, API secret key on a database of the uh, locally. So, so if you wonder you have this copy of API keys twice, does that, do, does it have to, can that one of those be like a new AWS key generated or does it have to be one of the last thing to the interface with the last to be the cloud stack? Say that again. Can you do 
PC accept them, so you put the API key here, mm -hmm. then your three provides them down here. Could any of these be a new unique set of items or new No, they need, they, need, they need to be the same. They have to be the same? Yeah. You're relying on cloud stack to generate the API key. Yeah. Secret manager, secret key manager. Just like secret key manager register. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I mean. All right. Well, I can. I, I'll take it over when I get to the time. Okay. But uh, I was just looking through uh, the uh, the uh, Which class? This one. Oh, okay. The tutorial. Yeah. Yeah. Were these only clients that mentioned? I thought there might be more clients. I remember like a spoke to you call me or something. Yeah. 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 Uh, did you take and sort of use that? Yeah. 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 Um, so. I mean, it's difficult. It's difficult to cover all the clients, but if you look here, I, I mentioned uh, the, the book that I've written. Um, so you get you get everything in there, and I mentioned uh, so Cloud Monkey. Uh, so the, it's more it's more involved. It's not a tutorial, but <coughs> so you got Cloud Monkey, J Clouds. That's Apache J Clouds, which is a Java. You know, Java uh, system application. Uh, Leap Cloud, we've seen that. <coughs> Boto. So, why would you use Boto instead of like uh, Java? Java might be more So, AW, the, the AWS client that I, I would like you to use actually uses Boto. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, you cannot use Boto straight up with CloudStack. Because Boto is just for EC2. Okay. Or EC2 and FACI. Wow. Yeah. So you need to run EC2 stack, uh -huh. and then if you run EC2 stack, then you can use Boto to talk ah, to I it. See. But otherwise, you cannot use Boto straight up to talk to CloudStack API. It's just not compatible. <coughs> and then there are things that are kind of on top, 
knife, which is a utility from a chef for configuration management. So with, with knife, for example, you do things like this knife, cloud stack, there is a cloud stack plugin service list, which returns the service offerings. Um, so that's knife, you know, it's more on the configuration management. Salt is another configuration that management system. That's called stack system yeah, engine. Yeah, okay. yeah. So it's all Python. So I actually worked uh, Salt Cloud. I, um, I created a cloud stack driver for them. Um, Were, Apache Were, <coughs> that's a, uh, so it's an Apache project. It uses jclouds and you can, you can basically define clusters of virtual machine. Thank you very much. Good job going all the way to EC2. <laughs> uh, and then, Have yeah, app, app, well, MapReduce, because where allows you to basically define a Hadoop cluster. So you can, on demand, create a Hadoop cluster in a cloud stack cloud. So I, I just show how you can then run a MapReduce job. So anyway, so that's, that's more information on there if you want. And there is, there is more, I mean, you, you have lots of plugins. I mean, Vagrant is not in, in, in that book, but I, I put it in here. Yeah. So since you know I have more knowledge, uh, can you give us a summary of the cloud stack cloud story? Hello, sir. Uh, I'm Christian Stein. So yeah, I've seen your name on the mailing list. Yeah. So what I want to do is understand how people are actually using this thing. Mm -hmm. And look at the client that you're using. Mm -hmm. Because I don't have a good flow for that. That's not my daily data plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So definitely Cloud Monkey. So a lot of the a lot of the uh, administrator of a cloud stack cloud, uh, they're gonna use Cloud Monkey because it has 100% coverage on the API and blah blah. Then users, they may they may look at something like Lib Cloud. Okay, uh, people who want to do hybrid cloud, so like a cloud stack and then an EC2 and then a GCE, they can use Lib Cloud. Because LibCloud has multiple driver, has, has drivers for every pro cloud provider. And those other cloud providers don't have uh, GCE metrics? Uh, no, like GCE, for example. Google Compute Engine doesn't expose EC2. Uh, Vagrant, that's really like a developers. You know, developers who are going to test everything, as you said, on VirtualBox locally, and then they want to push to the cloud. So the, the yeah, DevOps, DevOps guys, configuration management, so sysadmins, you know. Uh, but really, Ansible is not. Ansible just gets a, a file of IP addresses of the instances and then SSH onto those. So it's, the, the, it's not using the Cloud Stack API per se. And then the EC2 interface, which is something that, you know, as providers, we would run the EC2 interface and then people would use the, the AWS client or something like Boto. Yeah. <laughs> no, there are tons. There are tons of, of now, things. Uh, question about the interface. Is, uh, supporting the REST and the REST interface? Yeah. Yeah, it's REST. Only for EC2 stack. Or is it just the SOAP interface? No, the SOAP the SOAP interface to EC2 is deprecated in June. For even for Amazon? Or for yeah, REST? for for Amazon. Amazon is deprecating the SOAP interface in June. That's what they said. So, uh, yeah, I learned all this stuff just like from your Amazon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, hold on, let me let me show you. Yeah, I mean, for example, that's that. that. Those are all the. Oh, oh, wow. oh crap! Hold on. Yeah, wow, well, that's not gonna. Anyway, so that. So here you have all, all the configuration management system, and that's kind of my job. I make sure that all of them have some cloud stack support. So Chef is Knife, Ansible, uh, we have like a, a mechanism in there to do inventory. So it, it pulls cloud stack API, and it builds that list of IP address that then Ansible can use to do configuration. Uh, LibCloud, you know it, Salt Stack. Um, I guess open your IP address is for SDN. Yeah, so those uh, things like open daylight and then Gluster, those are different. That's not from, from the user side. That's on the admin to, to do uh, basically uh, open, flow, uh, open flow configuration on the, on the switches. And Docker? And Docker, that's just uh, a container, a Lexi-like container. So right now we have a branch in CloudStack. 
you do uh, basically a new hypervisor, which would be a Docker thing. So not VM, but just basically container. And there are, you know, FluentD, that's just a, that's a log aggregation system. Uh, so basically, there is a little Ruby client in there. You run CloudStack, and that Ruby client calls list events. It gets all the events that are happening in that cloud, and then uh, FluentD uh, spits out everything in JSON, and you can store it in, like, uh, Elasticsearch. Or that's Chef. And jCloud is used heavily in lots of uh, PaaS-like system. So, so Astratos, for example, like, which is an Apache project, a PaaS in Apache, they use jCloud. So those are standards that comes from the Open Grid oh, Forum, oh, okay. OGF, so that's a standard, OCCI. They're trying to come up with a standard for EC2, like EC2 is not a standard, de facto standard, but so they want to come up with a standard. These guys, DMTF, they also have a standard which is competing with OCCI. So their standard is CIMI, C-I-M-I. So these two are standard bodies trying to. So we have client, we have a client for these ones. I should say. This sounds like a full time job just for you. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, because you know, I want I want to make sure that the, like there is a very complete ecosystem, so that when people want to use CloudStack, they yeah. you know they have their tools of choice. Right. But so yeah, nothing is looking at security issues in those things. Yeah. Um, oh really? In the LDAP, we can we can we can take that. We can we'll take that off. Yeah. No, no, but I would like to hear about it uh, because then we can. He's a very good guy, but he, uh, yeah, he probably he's twenty-one. We we can, uh, but definitely you should. Yeah, you should tell me, and then we can uh, we can talk to him. And uh, and uh, did you re did you report those on the security? So yeah, yeah. So so let me show you because maybe maybe you can help. So I just moved the documentation to a brand new format. So uh, that's the main page: docs cloud stack apache .org. So if you want it there, you can do it. Or if you want it in installation or administration. So development development right now is here. So for example, if you want it in developers. Just edit on GitHub and and just fork that and then add a basically it's a it's all RSP restructured stuff. The developer guide is here. Uh, so just you know you can edit that file straight out and add some security files or you or you can just you know add a new file security.rst you know RST restructured stack is it's almost plain text. So that that would be very easy for you to contribute something there. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, that I think that would be great to have a security page on the on the developer on the developer guide. But I'm not going to write it. But if you if you write if you write something, I'll, I'll happily help you to uh, to put it on there. Yeah. So that's. Yeah. If you write if you write something in Markdown or something, I I, I can just take it and, and put it in there. Okay. Cool.
Yeah, good to meet you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, guys, it's 5.13. I think you've done a great job. 4.13? Oh, we still have time. Oh, I thought we were, OK. Am I back on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They gave me till five, yeah. <coughs> you guys still trying? Yeah, What is it, Tim? Is it saying like it's not supported yeah. on your driver? So, right. so here it's deployed. It's deploy node. It's not create node. It's con dot deploy underscore node and then what you did, yeah. Create node is also deployed. Yeah. So it's gonna work fine, but it's gonna start the instance. It's not gonna try to execute the script. So it's deploy node. Right? Yeah. It should it should be deploy node, but then deploy node might actually give another error. Maybe that's why. 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 Maybe so the key pair that you defined in the portal. Mm -hmm. So here you're just saying use that key pair. So you have a SSH key, key pair, yeah? And now you have, to, you have to say, when you're going to try to SSH onto that machine, use this private key. So it does the same thing in, in the sense that it starts the instance, but the deploy is going to actually uh, SCP the script in there and then execute it. So you have the Paramico problem. So sh show me, show me the Paramico issue. <coughs> So it's saying this when you're trying sudo pip install paramico. Right. PC failed. This is fine. This is all fine. Unknown argument. And what? What? It didn't. It didn't return anything. No, 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 it's, it's not, but I know that um, Screen is really good. Yeah, let me let me let me check the cloud stack documentation on your screen. <laughs> it looks really good. Nice. Wow. I'm liking this. 
Yeah, so I guess I need a, I need a new <laughs> screen. <laughs> uh, okay, so. <laughs> installing parameter on OSX. You have the entire X code? Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's Mavericks? Uh, I don't know. Offhand, I don't know. So if you do it from the instance, let's say you start a Ubuntu instance, SSH onto that Ubuntu instance, and, and try from there. Yeah, yeah. In, in, instead of using it from your local machine. What I do also, me, uh, I you know, I have VirtualBox and I have I use Vagrant, mm -hmm. so I always have like. A Ubuntu or Cent I have Ubuntu and CentOS images on my machine, so that you know I can quickly boot up uh, one of those one of those VMs. Vagrant is nice because once you have it set up, you do Vagrant up. It's going to start it with VirtualBox locally, and then you do Vagrant SSH, and bang, and it uses VirtualBox uh, VirtualBox headless. So you don't have any of the U GUI UI st stuff. So you do Vagrant SSH and boom, you know. So it looks like you're on Ubuntu or CentOS locally. Assuming you have enough RAM or that you didn't set up too much RAM for the. Uh, It was full. People, people started leaving. Yeah. Yes, I'm here. How are you? Good to see you. I'll see if I can grab you later. Yeah, well, we sure. Maybe tonight over a beer at the, yeah. At the yeah, yeah. Yeah, a couple, couple guys actually run the, uh, see that's my last uh, yeah, chapter that. in there. So a couple, couple people got it. The guy, uh, somebody from Verio was here, and he, yeah. he, he got it running. Yeah. Great. Only Dimitri has got a problem with some keys. <laughs> okay. Good. All right. Well, I'll yeah. find you at the beer. Sounds good. Thanks. Okay. Good that was the big boss right there.
Catch you tomorrow. All right. But Thank you. You're good. You're good. Yeah. You're good. Okay. Yes. Yes, you keep it running. API details, there you go. I highly recommend that you try to have uh, Ubuntu or, or use install VirtualBox so that you can have uh, Ubuntu or CentOS locally. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't have image. I downloaded the image. OK, yeah. Definitely, that's. I do know people you know, who are very, very talented who are using Windows and Putty. I, I used to work at CERN a little bit, and one of the ladies there was in charge of all the configuration management for the data center. She was working on a very tiny 13-inch laptop, Windows, and she was doing everything with Putty, and she had like 15 Putty win session going at the same time. That was crazy. But I don't think that's very optimal. Actually, Successfully actually registered, OK. At work, I have a Linux box, so I use Right, right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's your access key. So that's the, the first the first one. All right. Secret key is the second one. Yeah. It's capital C H dash capital G V two Yeah that's normal. So it runs it it needs to always run like this and in no, in another window you go So this is like a server Yeah it's a process. it's a server, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Put a put a table. Yeah. So now try uh, try AWS and yeah follow follow the doc. So next page. Yeah. So that one EC two describe the visibility zone.
Okay, kill, kill your EC2 stack server and, and, and restart it. Yeah, control C. Control C, no? Oh, that's pretty, maybe out, maybe Windows C. I don't know how you kill it, but just 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 kill it and and, and restart the restart. Yeah 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 yeah. Do a kill yeah. Just try Python. Put you know pipe grab Python or uh, uh, pipe grab EC2. Uh, Still no luck with the. No, we can try it again. It doesn't work. Okay. It's not my fault. It's, no. it's Maverick.
Okay, so did, did you see two stuff work? Oh, but it worked. Show me the, uh, ah, great, perfect, good job. I'm happy. Huh? It took me a while to get Yeah, but once you got the putty stuff going, that was fine. Okay, so I think that's a wrap, guys.